Oh wow, nice electric golden shiner. You see what I'm talking about? You could literally spend the entire day here doing nothing but looking for old school tracks. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in, wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Over the past year, we've spent a pretty good bit of time hanging out with Michael Bacon at Bacon's Tackle in Shreveport, Louisiana. We've seen some of the epic collections of lures that Michael has, including his collection of Fred C. Young original Big O's and the personal tackle boxes of Jack A. and Jack K. Smithwick. But in all the videos we've done, there's still one thing that we haven't done at Bacon's, and that is to do a proper retro bassin walkthrough. So today at Retro Bassin, we're at Bacon's Tackle, and I'm gonna do my best not to get sidetracked. It's not easy here, but I am gonna do my best to do a proper walkthrough and show you the goods that are available for purchase here at Bacon's. Stick around. The plan today is to start at the front of the shop and work our way back around to try to show you some of the things that are available for purchase here at Bacon's. Being so close to Alexandria, Louisiana, it's not a surprise that there is a Bill Lewis lure or two here, but right beside me has to be a pretty impressive wall of old school rattle traps. Everything here is in the old school uh, shell case, and there are definitely some retro models here. So, I don't know about you, but growing up as a kid, uh, when I saw this box, there was just something magical about it. Uh, I love the uh, Bill Lewis logo that was on there, that little cartoon guy fishing. <laughs> and the old Rat L Trap. Might have been Bill Lewis himself. And there is a nice uh, saucy color of a rattle trap there. Woo! I was talking to my buddy Epic Eric, and he seems to think that these old rattle traps sound a little bit different. And yeah, I gotta be honest with you, the older the bait, it seems like the lower the thump on that plastic. So let's see what other uh, Bill Lewis rattle traps we've got in some maybe old school colors. Uh, ooh. Well, that's interesting. Uh, a nice diving rattle trap that's got the lip on it uh, in a sunfish pattern for $5.99. So it looks like the prices on these guys, by the way, for the most part uh, are $5.99, thereabouts. Pretty much in line with your standard rattle trap price. Ooh, nice bleeding shiner. There's one I, I haven't seen before. It's a diving rattle trap, but it's a diving rattle trap sinker mag trap. I don't know that I've ever seen that before. Let's take a look at this thing. Woo! Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna have to grab one of those. A little Smokey Joe pattern. Ooh, another uh, discontinued bait from Rattle Trap that I always liked were the Red Zones. There's one, that's their suspending Rattle Trap. Let's open this thing up and see. So this one definitely is a little bit lighter. It's half ounce class, but obviously if it's a suspending bait with the same profile, it's gonna be smaller. But there's the old red zone. You can tell it's usually got the red zone logo on it. And it tends to have a little bit of a more higher pitched rattle. A little bit more similar to a cotton cordell rattle spot, but a nice suspending lipless crankbait. And yeah, I used to love this thing uh, for some cold water pickerel slash bass fishing. There's another red zone in a chartreuse crawl pattern. Woo! With a little bit of uh, metallic on there. Oh man, $4.99 for that guy. Oh, who remembers the sparkle trap? Oh, 
this was an interesting line. Around the same time they're coming out with the halos, they just had some rattle traps that were this almost like black with green sparkles on it. And because it was the epoxy, it seemed like they had a little bit of a lower thump to me. Uh, nice old school shad pattern of a rattle trap there. Half ounce, a ton of half ounces by the way. Tennessee Shad. Is it just me or does nobody throw a Tennessee Shad anymore? I feel like that's a color that used to be like all the rage and you don't see a ton of Tennessee Shad these days for whatever reason. We'll open this guy up. Ooh, but yeah, I always like the Tennessee Shad. Nice sort of mossy green back, uh, white side and orange belly. It's a good looking bait. You know me, I'm a sucker for anything a color selector. And here's one, a, a color selector rattle trap. This is one of, I think they had like a couple different varieties they put in the old color selector uh, paint schemes. And this is one, it's an interesting black with gold and a little bit of orange and green. Uh, I forget the name of this color, but it's a very interesting shad pattern. Look at the, uh, it's got a little bit of green on the chin, a little bit of orange at the belly. Oof, nice. This is called System 10 Rattle Trap. Uh, another discontinued uh, color from Rattle Trap, the old Hot Tails. And all this is was a, often a chrome bait just with the rear end dipped in either chartreuse or flow orange paint, which is kind of funny. We'll open this guy up. <laughs> Here's another System 10 color. Uh, this one's a little bit more of a traditional color pattern, but I guess in that color selector motif. And I just think it's because it's got some unique colors on the belly is why they made these things uh, a System 10 color selector baits. One thing that I've noticed with these old school box of rattle traps, and it was always unfortunate, but that tag tended to be a little bit fragile. Um, especially after 20 years on the peg. So a lot of these have been replaced, uh, which is just kind of the nature of the beast when it comes to these old school rattle traps. Here's another cool uh, color scheme from rattle trap, the old halo, which basically just had some like reflective tape on the inside of the trap itself. I always love these ones. These are some of my favorites. And oof, look at that. And let's listen to those old school uh, BBs. Yeah, that's got an old-timey thump, doesn't it? The ghost. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. This was definitely a color pattern that came out before my time. Uh, ghost for $3.39. Let's check this thing out. Ooh, look at that. So that is almost like it was just made with red plastic. The whole thing is the same color, this sort of translucent red. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think the, uh, the ghost is gonna be haunting my tackle box. Uh, sorry, Bass and Buds. This, I only see one of these on the rack and it's coming with me. <laughs> By the way, it's like 10 minutes in and I just haven't even gotten past the first section here at Bacon's. <sighs> I'm gonna have to get moving on this thing, otherwise it's gonna be like a two hour video. But before we get out of the rattle traps, I do know that a lot of folks these days, I think perhaps thanks to Debo, uh, are really looking for this, the old Tequila Sunrise rattle trap. My first ever rattle trap actually was in this color uh, back in you know 1993. And look at that, that's the three quarter ounce Tequila Sunrise. Oof, <laughs> get them while you can, I guess. We've moved approximately uh, six inches down the aisle to the next section that I just had to stop at. Continuing the theme of lipless crankbaits, there's some offerings from some manufacturers other than Bill Lewis. So first off, I see some of these from Lord Jensen, the old school sugar shad. 
And this is a tough one. If you want to get this thing online, um, it's actually pretty tough to find and definitely tough to get for under 10 bucks per. Uh, this dude is 788 for the old Sugar Shad. Uh, this is a bait I've never actually thrown before. A little bit more of a fish profile, kind of like something Tom Mann might have uh, designed, but it is not. Nice half ounce bait there. Oh, there's a nice sugar shad in a Smoky Joe kind of chrome color. Ooh, a nice crawl pattern. We're just moving on down this first aisle here. And one of the interesting things that Michael told me about Bacons is that at one point they made, I think it was 90% of the skirts for spinnerbaits around the world. And here's a selection of some Bacon latex skirts. This is sort of the precursor to the living rubber, which according to Michael is basically either a square or round uh, skirt. These are actually just flat pieces of uh, latex, but they definitely have that old school undulating pattern. So you can get a two pack here for 319 and ooh, if you've got an old spinnerbait that uh, the living rubber is no longer alive, this would be the perfect place to restock. There's also some really nice old school colors of these skirts I'll show you. Ooh, look at that, yellow and white. Uh, looks like blue chartreuse and red. Oh, there's an old green and yeller. Oh, look at that. Uh, and the classic black and yellow. Yeah, so there's probably 50 different colors up here on the rack, but I'm going to totally steal some of these because I've gotten some old baits that definitely need a new skirt. So the trick with bacons is I never know exactly what is for display and what's for sale. I just found this box of uh, looks like skirtless spinner baits. Definitely some OG heads in there. Um, it's not labeled. It doesn't say if there's a price on it. So I don't know if this is for sale or not, but I'm going to grab a few of these to try to pair them up with those bacon skirts. <laughs> if I can actually get one out of here, I'll show it to you. Okay. So that's a nice old school cone head spinner bait. Uh, looks like it's got a will leaf blade and is that a ball bearing swivel? No, it's not. Just the old school barrel swivel. Still, that would totally catch. And that's a really nice thin wire. They are tangled in here, something good. <laughs> oh, so there's one, a nice one. Sort of a flow orange with a double Colorado blade. Ooh, that is a really thin wire too. Oh man, I hope these are for sale. I don't know if they are or not, because uh, I totally could be making some bacon spinner baits with these. You almost have to check out every corner of this place yourself. So just on a random end cap, you might find a random lure that you've never ever seen before, like this. New from Eland series, the new combo fishtail soft plastic. <laughs> no idea. Uh, what is this? Looks like it's some sort of worm in the shape of a little fish. Comes with some reflective eyes and uh, <laughs> check that out. I think at one point this is probably going to be the hottest bait out there and uh, just never happened. So here's another cool package of this same uh, fishtail worm. Uh, looks like we're selling it for $3.99. What is that? Looks like it's a worm with a little bit of a fish on the back. I have no idea if that would work, but um, I might have to get a pack of two of these to see if I can make it work. <laughs> One of the coolest parts about bacons, at least as far as I'm concerned, are the literally thousands and thousands of pounds of rattle traps that he sells, uh, one for $2 or three for $5 that don't have the hooks. According to Michael, he purchased uh, from Bill Lewis Lures back in the day 16,000 pounds of these things. That's right. I don't even know what number that would be. I'd have to get out my calculator. But either way, he's got basically boxes and boxes, both in storage and in the shop, of rattle traps without the hooks. 
Not a bad deal, one for two dollars or three for five on a bait that you're probably gonna switch out the hooks on anyway. So I have been going through these bins trying to find either some colors that I've been looking for, maybe some colors that I've never seen and hopefully a unique style or two. Uh, first things first, I showed this for the camera. Tequila Sunrise has been the talk of the town as of late. And there's a nice Tequila Sunrise in a bleeding shad pattern. There's the same bait in the quarter ounce version. Ooh, I'm gonna be grabbing those guys for sure. <laughs> Uh, what is this? Looks like a Magnum Trap, three-quarter ounce, and a nice flow orange sort of Smoky Joe pattern. I forget the name of that. Ooh, there's another three-quarter ounce Rattle Trap in a crappie. There's just so many here, it's crazy. Uh, there's an old school color. Look at that thing. Uh, and again, <laughs> they definitely don't make this anymore. Uh, what is the name of that? It's got like a black belly, a black top and sort of a silver scale pattern. Woo! I better get a box of these. All right, I'm gonna start boxing some of this up. Um, oh, wow. So we found some of those ghosts that were new in the package over there. This to me looks like something in the ghost line. It's a blue ghost. And man, that could just be the sexiest rattle trap I think I've ever seen. Look at, you can even see right through it. Woof, man, <laughs> look at that. And I think I see a couple of those. So yeah, they're gonna be coming with me. A uh, nice old school bass pattern in the three quarter ounce rattle trap. There's another one. That's sort of a, a ghostly looking uh, rattle trap, isn't it? I don't know if that's the ghost pattern or not. I'm going to assume it is. Yeah, clear through. Look at that. Uh, there's a nice metallic purple. Definitely a saltwater trap for sure. Three quarter ounce. Ooh, diving rattle trap. Oh, floater. Oh man, yeah, a little parrot color. Think I will. There's another nice diving rattle trap in an electric blue shad. Woof. Ooh, there's that old silver scale pattern in a three quarter. Yeah, I might have to grab that guy. Another blue ghost. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. So I picked up one of these a few years ago. This is a green plastic rattle trap. I actually used to throw this exact color in saltwater a pretty good bit for striped bass. It's got a little bit of a reflective tape, sort of reminiscent of one of the halo baits. Uh, another diving rattle trap in the uh, pumpkin seed pattern. Ooh. Ooh, crawfish diving trap. Oh my goodness. There's just so, so much here. It's crazy. Oh, there we go. There's a nice uh, halo version of this thing. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is a nice reflective version. I forget, is that called avocado? I'm not sure what color that is. Either way, I'll figure it on the back end when it's in my tackle box. Ooh, there's a nice uh, sort of uh, almost like a green shad pattern. Sort of like a Tennessee shad, but not exactly. Ooh, diving rattle trap, pumpkin seed, a big one. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's the old school color selector trap. Oh, wow. Nice electric. Golden Shiner. You see what I'm talking about? You could literally spend the entire day here doing nothing but looking for old school traps. What does this say? Last one. Grand Casino 1998. Yeah. <laughs> if that doesn't call Retro's name, I don't know what does. <laughs> 
Oh, and in addition to the rattle traps, there's also a couple of other Bill Lewis baits in here. So look at this, the old top water from Bill Lewis. That's actually a good looking bait. And I'll also see a few of these, uh, the old rattlestick. This one's interesting. It's just the metallic, sort of unpainted. And that's kind of the thing too. If you are somebody that likes to just get old school baits and repaint them, this is perfect. Because look, there's a ton of these with literally no paint on them at all. Just a ton of them that are straight up either metallic or look at that, just chartreuse, no eyes, no nothing. You can't talk old school worming without talking about cream lures. This is a selection of some really awesome cream baits, mostly scoundrels. And it looks like he's got some newer baits over here and definitely some vintage creams in <laughs> some old school golden colors. Look at this, so there's a classic cream scoundrel as made in Tyler, Texas. And what is this? This is a nice old cream scoundrel for 369 in an old green that is, well, kind of calling old Retro's name. I feel like I've been saying that a lot today, by the way. <laughs> uh, another old timey, <laughs> really uh, seen better day package of the old cream scoundrel. I don't know if that's like sort of a methylate kind of color there. <laughs> In addition to some more uh, traditional, I love my worm colors. Ooh, look at that swirl. <laughs> By the way, you notice I'm trying to avoid the rattle traps that are like right next to me. Everywhere you turn here, handfuls. So there's a ton of cream scoundrels. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to just kind of go through high level view of what they have to offer. Um, most of these I have seen before, but some of these are definitely in, what is this color called? Uh, so here's one in an old school grass snake color. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> so in addition to that, some of the old school carded scoundrels they've got. Uh, back when you used to buy worms in a four pack on a card, just like this. And to tell you, there ain't nothing more OG than a blue and white worm. <laughs> Speaking of OG worms, check out this selection of classic flip tails. I talked to Michael and these are vintage flip tails that he had made uh, with Orby Party of Flip Tail Lure Company. And for those who don't know, the first bass ever caught in a BASS tournament was most likely caught by Bill Dance on a blue flip tail worm. Uh, so there's a nice OG blue flip tail lizard and there's a ton of these things. Uh, how much is this thing going for? Uh, $5.99, but just the classic, classic flip tails. So it looks like these are mostly lizards. He's got a ton of lizards and he's got a couple worms up front as well. I will show you in the loose worm section, but either way, That's a good looking little pegboard, isn't it? This is perhaps the biggest section of pegboard that I've ever seen in a tackle shop. There is nothing but just <laughs> pegs and lures from here to Oxnard. So I will roll down this section as quick as I can. It's sort of a grab bag of different stuff. Uh, there are definitely some vintage baits hidden among the newer baits in here. So I'm kind of going down the line. There's just a ton of random stuff that's kind of popping out, but uh, look at this. Uh, nice OG Fred C. Young Big O in the little tiny model there. Ooh, look at that. Uh, 419 <laughs> for that dude. There's a couple of those on the peg. And look at this, discontinued Cotton Cordell Wiggle O. Sort of their version of the strong Wiggle Wart. A nice little saucy crawfish pattern. How much is this guy? Oh, it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm buying it. Uh, I've also got a long rattle spot. Just, I, I just love, you just never know what kind of little old school gold you're gonna find on the peg. And there's so much that even though I don't want to, I'm gonna have to leave a lot of this stuff. <laughs> just not this guy. Oh, so here's some nice uh, walleye uh, crankbaits from Cotton Cordell, the old walleye series. I always like that flow green. Sort of reminds me of the old color selector. Ooh, a little flow orange action. 
and chartreuse. 449 for those guys. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know how many walleye fishermen are in uh, Louisiana. Maybe that's, I mean, that's why they're still in the peg. I was so excited when Uncle Josh reintroduced the pork frog. It was like, what, last year, I think? Well, <laughs> these on the shelf are not reissues. <laughs> of course, if any place is going to have, like, pretty much just almost a full rack of OG pork, it'd be Bacon's. Uh, check this out. This is the old jumbo pork frog. And that pork still looks tasty, doesn't it? <laughs> how old do you think that is, by the way? Metal cap. And how much is this? Four nineteen. Yeah, that kind of beats today's prices, I hate to say it. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, the old number 11 pork frog. That's the classic one, isn't it? Uh, Five thirty-nine. Pretty, pretty pricey. <laughs> Not by today's standards. Yeah, there's the old number 11 in sort of a white color. That that would look good on the back of the old Johnson Silver Minnow, wouldn't it? <laughs> just, I don't even know what to do with this. It's just nice glitter strips just hanging out, just waiting to be bought. This pig probably lived, what, 30 years ago at this point? And uh, there we go. <laughs> Uh, here's one, uh, the old pork crawdad. Wow. Another glitter eel. And, ooh, the old flipping frog. Wow. That's actually got all the juice in it, too. So I am back up at the front of the store, standing behind two pretty impressive rows of loose, soft plastic baits. And there are just... I don't even know how many boxes there are, but they're all basically boxes like this lined and they've got nothing but OG plastics. So there's a mixture of some different ones. I'll kind of go down the aisle and try to tell you what I see, but there's just so much. You just got to get here and see it for yourself. Looks like a ton of OG Jean LaRue crawfish. Woo, look at that. The old salty crawl in just about every color you could probably want as well as a ton of flip tail lizards. There's a nice lizard in a methylate color. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. If that would not work on a springtime Carolina rig, I don't know what would. And just aisles and aisles, there's just boxes and boxes of these flip tails. So what is the price for this stuff, by the way? So um, I think everything is a little bit different. But it looks like the Jean LaRue Salty Crawls are $6 for a quarter pound. Uh, I have no idea how many Salty Crawls go in a quarter pound, but I've got a feeling you're getting your money's worth at 6 bucks. So he is selling these flip tail lizards for $0.99 cents each. But you could probably mix and match the colors and spend 100 bucks and never duplicate a color once. All right, just keep it on down the aisle here. So here are some six inch lizards. He's selling these for $3.69 for a quarter pound. I don't know what the name brand of this is. It looks like it's not branded, but look at that. It's got a nice little hook pocket in there. I kind of like that. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you just never know what you're gonna find. So, just some old school rebel ringworms hanging out, just waiting to be purchased. Look at this, just a giant bag of ringworms hanging out. <laughs> Black. <laughs> Check it out. So, there's just bags and bags of these. OG ringworms, man, that's a tough bait. That looks like the old, uh, what is that, eight, nine incher? <laughs> And then there are some paddle tail rigworms in a nice uh, purple and yellow. Whew. All right, we moved on down here a little bit. Uh, looks like the ringworms keep coming. Just nothing but ringworms. This is just craziness. Uh, as well as this, what is this? A 12 inch sickle tail worm. And it does sort of have almost like a little bit of a rib on that. 12 inch sickle tail worm, I have not heard of that. Uh, these are available at $2.79 for a quarter pound. 
Uh, it says approximately eight and a quarter pounds. So 279 for eight eight inch worms. Yeah, buddy, look at that. Oh, I'm totally gonna grab eight of these and put this in my big old worm box. Oh, and very cool. Uh, we've got a section of this. Terminator lizards, but there's something pretty special about this. These are from Jawtech. Uh, shout out to Colt over at Jawtech. He and I have been talking. He recently restarted his dad's soft plastic business. We're going to do a full retro bass and video on Jawtech coming up real, real soon. But in the meantime, it's cool to see that Bacon has some of these still around from back in the day. I mean, of course he does, right? <laughs> So this looks like the old Jawtech Terminator Lizard. Yes, it is. You can tell uh, because it's got that little rib body to it. Woo! Just for time constraints, I'm going to have to blaze through a lot of these loose soft plastics, but I do have to show you one more before we move on to the next and final section. Look at this. This is an OG cream pigtail. I almost imagine this thing would uh, sort of swim in like a wacky rig or a walking worm or something like that. So he's got them just loose hanging out. I'm assuming these are under the curly tail worm section and these are $5.19 for a quarter pound. <laughs> so there's a nice smoke with golden flake. And then over here, ooh, look at this, purple with metal flake. Yeah, buddy, we are totally gonna grab a bag or two of those to see if they still work. Speaking of loose baits, at one point Michael said he had barrels of loose cotton cordell big O's. Well, he still has these, which are loose, hookless Smithwicks. <laughs> Most of these are the deep dive and rogue, but I think occasionally you could find one in here with a shallower bill, but that bill tended to be a little bit fragile, so I think some of those might have gotten busted off. Uh, but if you are looking for a deep rogue, I think he's selling these for five bucks each without the hooks. Oh, and it says that these are all pre-1982. So, yeah, that is about as OG as it gets. And there are, right here, one, two, three bins. Each of these bins is probably 300 pounds of Old Smithwicks. Looks like some nice uh, OG colors there. Look at that guy. Woof. And yeah, there's a rogue. Look at him. <laughs> oh, and that lip feels nice too. I might have to grab one or two of those. <laughs> uh, it has been quite a trip to Bacon's today, but the last stop of the day for me is this, uh, this pretty glorious rotating jewel case. <laughs> And this is where Michael puts his more rare vintage lures as well as his own frog skin creations. There's a few frog skin baits that I've been eyeing that I'm totally gonna take with me. There's not a ton left, but there's one that I am eyeing. So let's get it up there and check it out. Ah, uh, yeah. So I do have another one of Michael's frog skin baits. I've been eyeing this thing up. This is an old Smithwick toothpick that he actually ended up putting a real frog skin on. And, ah, uh, <laughs> that's gonna be a fun one to throw. This, honest to God, true story. I was laying in bed one night and uh, I was thinking, I'd gotten barrels from Cotton Cordell. I'd gotten barrels from Jack Smithwick of baits, just no hooks, just baits and overruns and blemishes and whatever. And I thought, Bill Lewis ought to have some baits. And I said, I think I'm gonna find out. Uh, Bill Lewis had died, him and my dad were good friends. But uh, anyway, this was uh, here at this shop. Monday morning I was here and about nine o'clock, the phone rang and I've got caller ID and had Bill Lewis lures. I went, Bacon's. Hey, Mr. Mike, this is Buddy. I said, hey, buddy, what, uh, he said, yeah, I've left this one company and I'm working for Bill Lewis Lures now. I said, really? And he had a question about something, and uh, he said, well, thank you, that'll really help. I said, hey, before you get off, I said, uh, do you have any overruns? You got any extra rattle traps? I said, I'm looking for bulk, massive bulk, no hooks, 
I don't care how many what colors they are. I just want to buy them by the pound. And he goes, I think I do. He said, let me go talk to the bookkeeper and I'll call you back. So he called back two or three hours later. He said, we have some. I said, do you mean bring a truck down? I mean, is it just bring a Toyota, a little bitty deal? He said, no, you, you, you can bring whatever you want to get. Uh, I said, yeah, come on down. We'll talk about it. So I, I took a 16-foot trailer and went to, went to uh, Alexandria. And uh, went in there, and he said, yeah, come on back here. So we went back there, and uh, it was like uh, Indiana Jones, where they put the Ark of the Covenant in storage. He opened the door and flipped on the light, and he said, I said, where are the rattle traps? He said, all these pallets are rattle traps, and they were about four to five foot tall and five foot square, just massive amounts of rattle traps. And I said, uh, he said, oh, come on. And he, he just ripped up a, a cut a box up with a box cutter, and it was just rattle traps, just loose. And I said, I would like to buy, buy the pound. I don't care about numbers or nothing. He said, let me go talk to the bookkeeper, and I uh, went up there, and I said, oh, I said, uh, if I write you a check for this amount right here, and I wrote it down on a piece of paper and gave it to him, said, uh, let me, how many will that get me? And uh, so he went up there, came back about 20 minutes later, which is a long time, if nothing going on. He said, if you write me a check for this amount right here, you have to take 3,000 pounds. And I said, if I write a check for this, no, it's 5,000 pounds. I'm positive, it's 5,000 pounds. If I write a check for this, uh, 5,000 pounds of rattle trap, said, yes, sir. So I said, you got it. So backed up. We loaded that thing. They started putting boxes on uh, a scale, and they were anywhere from like 48 pounds to 62 pounds a box. He said, I'll just forget it. We just do 50 pounds a box, and and whatever so we just started counting boxes in and I had my 16 foot trailer loaded down the back of my truck loaded down and I was driving back up 49 and my truck was tilted like this and and it started getting dark and when I got off the highway the lights were shining in the trees coming out here unloaded I made three trips of nothing but rattle traps the, the second time I went yeah second time I went um, I took my son, and uh, they just threw the, gave me the keys. He said, uh, I said, uh, he, they said, they're fixing to leave. And I said, well, uh, he said, you're not going to be able to get them all. I said, well, I'll sure try. He said, no, you don't understand. So he went and opened the side door. He said, see those barracks back there? He said, they're all full of rattle traps going back from day one. Yeah. And, but anyway, when I... Uh, so me, my son went down there and we unloaded on a Sunday. I made three trips, maybe four, but it, it was over 16,000 pounds of rattle traps before it was all said and done. And I thought, something's telling me I need to just come back and get more, but I had no place to put them. And uh, so uh, that's all I got, around 16,000 pounds of rattle traps. And some of them were the old stuff, you know, like the Gobies and the Red River Lure Company. That was Bill Lewis before Bill Lewis Lures, called Red River Lure Company. Anyway, I got all those. That was kind of neat. Just comes to you. You got to be careful what you think of. Good or bad, it'll come to you. Well, hopefully you enjoyed our little walkthrough of Bacon's Tackle. That really wasn't such a little walkthrough after all. So if you do see anything that you want to purchase here at Bacon's, got some good news and got some bad news. So the good news is they do take cash as well as credit cards. The bad news is, and maybe that's good news too, but you got to get your butt in here. So come on down to Bacon's, and when you do come, make sure you got a little bit of time because it is definitely worth a few hours to hang out and just absorb this place. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.